There was no trial, no discussion, no evidence, no proof. There was only judgment and punishment. It is highly likely that Russia was responsible. We do hold Russia culpable. Culpable. Culpable for the attempted murder. More than a hundred Russian diplomats were expelled by Britain and its allies. They were told to pack and leave. Russia replied in kind, tit for tat. Moscow wasn't asked to defend itself. It was told only to confess. We're all confident about the identity of the culprit. And the only question is whether he will first confess. The press led the mob. Pundits marched forward, proclaiming Russia's culpability and guilt. They needed no proof. What they wanted was fear, ratings. They said the government had all the proof it needed. Are you ready to point the finger of blame, Foreign Secretary? Sir, is there now certainly a Russian connection? Is the government going to accuse Russia? Poisoning of Sergei Skripal is not an isolated case, but the latest in a pattern of reckless behavior by the Russian state. The Russians. The Russians are... Russian. Russia. Russia. Russian. Russian denial. I'm afraid the evidence is overwhelming that it is Russia. The UK Foreign Office tweeted that the Novichok nerve agent used in the attack on Sergei Skripal and his daughter came from Russia. And then it all went south. We have not verified the precise source. You have not been able to establish at Porton Down that this was made in Russia. As I said, it's our job to provide, you know, the scientific evidence that identifies what the particular nerve agent is. So to be clear, you're not able at Porton Down to say where it is from? We haven't yet been able to do that. Britain's top chemical lab said that they had no idea where the nerve agent came from, in direct contradiction to Boris Johnson's claims. Claims that he used to convince his allies to boot out Russian diplomats. The Foreign Office's initial tweet was quickly deleted, and all of it was blamed on a misunderstanding. Someone had transcribed it wrong, except Boris had said the same thing on video. You argue that uh, the source of uh, this nerve agent, Novichok, is Russia. How did you manage to find it out so quickly? When I look at the, at the evidence, I mean, the people from, from Port and Down, they were absolutely categorical. And I asked the guy myself, I said, are you sure? And he said, there's no doubt. Britain's government went into damage control. They had other secret information, they claimed. Intelligence reports, all classified, of course. But that doesn't matter. It could only have been Russia. There is no alternative conclusion other than that the Russian state was culpable for the attempted murder of Mr. Skripal and his daughter. The pundits needed even less. The name Novichok sounds Russian, means Russia did it. They've established that it is Novichok, and that is, by definition of, of the translation of the name, which means newcomer, uh, part of a program in the Soviet Union in the late 70s and 80s. The point's made. There are a lot of questions to ask of this whole mess, but over the last weeks, we've interviewed dozens of chemists, experts and military types, and here are their biggest gripes. The Novichok nerve agents are no secret. They haven't been for decades. There's many well-published formulas of nerve agents, so that's uh, it's no problem. I mean, Mary, whether you have sarin, soman, GF, VX, they're abundant, abundant, and, and the structures are known and the, the toxicity profiles are known. So, so many people can make nerve agents. It, it, they know what structures to go, go toward. Thing is, anyone can legally synthesize nerve agents. There's no ban, so long as it's for research. The OPCW convention does not forbid researching toxins for the purpose of defense against them. I think many countries which have advanced chemical programs carry out such research for defense. As we show, there is unclassified information that the US, Britain, France, the Czech Republic and others carry out such research. 
might come as a surprise given what Boris Johnson and others had said earlier. All you need to know about the difference between modern Britain and the government of Vladimir Putin. Uh, so seriously, they make Novichok. We make lightsabers. One is a hideous weapon specifically designed for assassination. The other is a, 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 an implausible theatrical prop uh, with a mysterious buzz that plainly wouldn't harm anybody. Perhaps not the entire truth. They identified the substance very quickly, which would mean with absolute certainty that Porton Down has the substance, which it could compare structure samples with. Not so innocent after all. Porton Down has its own secrets. Well, there's no way that anything like that would ever have come from us or, you know, leave the four walls of our facilities. What do you say to the, the, the theory that it's, this is somehow a British operation? and you've waved it out of the door? Well, it certainly isn't anything that came from our facility, because, as I said, we've got the highest standards of control and security, and there's no way that anything like that could ever have come from Portland Down. The, the, the uh, laboratory... So they have the samples, they yeah. They do. It's not a secret. You can literally Google step-by-step -step instructions on the synthesis of the deadliest nerve agents. Here they are screenshots from books and studies available to the public. Neither the formula nor the chemicals are any more Russian than air itself. The chemicals are very simple, and so the first reports on these uh, kept blaming, um, kept, kept saying that the chemicals were uniquely Russian technology. And, and when I look at the chemical structures, that, that simply isn't true. For years now, researchers have published studies and theses on Novichok, which there are dozens and dozens of, many developed in different countries. In 2007, a U.S. author published a paper on numerous chemical compounds. We were interested because of their toxicity. The author united them under the Novichok system. Here, I can show you. There are more than 60 compounds here, and they have all been indexed. That means someone somewhere synthesized them and shared the information. Since then, these formulas, or some of them, have appeared in various publications constantly. You simply cannot say they are a secret. There's more to it. If you suspect a potential adversary has made a new discovery, you have to do the same in order to study the new substance's properties and make an antidote. It's true to say that Russia is not the only country being able to synthesize uh, a few grams of Novichok. In the late 90s, all intelligence services in the West uh, uh, worked on Novichok because there were these rumors about a new military chemical agent produced in Russia. So, so I'm not surprised that uh, uh, in France, in uh, in UK, in the uh, United States, they have this kind of information that could uh, explain uh, the speed in which the products was identified. This, that's the purpose and that's the job of this kind of uh, laboratories. And it really isn't as difficult as it sounds. If it's really a Novichok we are dealing with, it's not a real problem to synthesize that kind of nerve agent. All the necessary components are easily available on the open market. The synthesis does not require sophisticated procedures. Any specialist in organic chemistry would be able to make it. Though every expert we talk to says you need serious expertise and substantial funding to make the pure nerve agent.